haven't just come here to go through a ritual, but we know that we can meet you in this place, oh God, and we can feel your presence and you can move in our situation. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a sweet presence of the Lord in this place. If we could stay in that and, and turn in our Bibles to Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. Starting at verse 7. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord has a word for us here this morning. Amen. Job chapter 14, starting at verse 7 and reading through to verse 9. For there is hope for a tree, if it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its tender shoots will not cease. Though its root may grow old in the earth, and its stump may die in the ground, yet, everybody say yet, yet. yet. At the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. And for the next few minutes, I'd like to preach to you on the thought, the scent of hope. The scent of hope. If we could just pray before we get started. Lord Jesus, God, we thank you for what you are already accomplishing in this place, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for your presence that we feel here, O oh God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would continue to move throughout this service, O oh Lord, that you would speak to us, O oh God, that you would use me to minister to your people, O oh Lord, and that your spirit would move in a wonderful and a mighty way, God, that we would be refreshed in you here today, O oh Lord. I pray in this, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. The scent of hope. In 2018, Barack Obama led one of the most famous campaigns in the long history of democracy around the world. And this ultimately led to him becoming uh, the 44th president of the United States. As you can tell, I'm American. Um, but just to uh, make you feel better, I've been here nine years and I'm a dual citizen now. So praise God. Amen. He became the 44th president of the United States. That year was filled with rousing speech after rousing speech, and, and you probably would have remembered that as he went across the country and even across the nation uh, with his speeches. Millions of people all over the globe were, were inspired by the central theme of Barack Obama's every speech, of, 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 of every advertisement, of every sign, and of every sticker. Hope. And what do you think of when you hear the word hope here this morning? To the Roman philosopher Pliny the Elder, hope was the pillar that holds up the world. Hope is the dream of a waking man. Bishop Desmond Tutu, an anti-apartheid leader in South Africa, described hope as being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. Obama himself said in one of his many speeches that Hope is that thing inside of us that insists, despite all evidence to the contrary, that something better awaits us if we have the courage to reach for it and to work for it and to fight for it. Amen. And in researching this message, I, I also found a lot of pessimist statements about hope. They were quite negative about this subject of hope. And, and that word always seems to stir within human beings a response, whether it's a roll of the eyes or whether it's a gra a grabbing a hold of that word. In getting back to our text that we read this morning in Job, we see that Job is facing what seems like a hopeless situation. He has lost everything. He has lost his children. He has lost his wealth. And finally, he has even lost his health. And it is in this dire circumstances, in this situation that that his friends decide to lecture him. How many here are thankful for great friends, amen, that kick you when you're down? <laughs> when you're going through situations and you, and you need a word of hope and you need a word of help, they come in and, and tell you that, hey, it could be worse, you know? <laughs> and so one of them encourages Job to repent, not really understanding what was going on. And, 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 and he assumes that Job was, was being punished for sinning or for doing wrong. And, 
And another one tells Job after Job responds to the first friend. Another one says that his punishment wasn't severe enough. It wasn't enough that he lost his kids. It wasn't enough that he lost his wealth and even his health. That wasn't enough. And then Job responds to these words by talking about a tree. He says, for there is hope for a tree when it is cut down that it will sprout again. And its shoots will not fail. Though its roots grow old in the ground and its stump dries in, uh, dies in the dry soil, yet at the scent of water it will flourish and put forth sprigs like a plant. I can see Job in this situation picturing in his mind a tree. This is a, a strong and a solid tree. One might call it a, street, a tree of significance. Amen. It is strong and solid and, and healthy. Its branches reaching toward the heavens and its limbs covered with beautiful green leaves. And then suddenly this tree, this beautiful strong tree is cut down. Maybe its branches are used for kindling and, and what was once a solid trunk is now used to build a home. The beautiful, healthy, strong tree has been reduced to nothing but a stump. Its once intricate root system, which, which gave the tree life, is now uh, growing old and dying in the ground. This tree faces what seems like a hopeless situation. The branches are gone. The leaves are gone. The trunk is even gone. And the roots have become old. Yet. Yet. Amen. It may seem hopeless, but there is a yet involved. Who here is thankful for a yet that may be involved in your situation? Hallelujah. You see, yet means in spite of or nevertheless. This may be going wrong, yet there is a yet involved in my situation. Hallelujah. And some of you here in this place this morning, you need to get a yet deep down in your spirit here today. Hallelujah. You need to get a yet kind of attitude in your spirit here today that maybe I'm going through a difficult situation yet. Hallelujah. The diagnosis may not be what I wanted to hear yet. Oh God. I feel like I have failed God yet. My family is falling apart yet. Hmm. My heart is broken and my life is in pieces yet. You don't understand my situation is hopeless yet hallelujah some of us need to get a yet in our spirit here today that despite the circumstances surrounding us there is more to the story hallelujah there is more to my situation there is more going on behind the scenes hallelujah job said yet at the scent of water it will bud and bring forth branches as a plant just at the scent of water there is hope for a tree it doesn't have to be a monsoon it doesn't have to be a downpour. It doesn't even have to be a sprinkle. Just at the scent of water, there is hope. Hallelujah. There is hope for a, a stump. Hallelujah. And life can spring back into that stump. Life can bring, spring back into that dead situation. And some of you may be sitting here uh, in this place here this morning thinking about, what, what are you talking about? Why are you talking about a tree? Why have you spent the last eight minutes talking to us about a dead tree. Amen. You see, Job, he was using this example to further illustrate to the people around him that his situation was indeed completely hopeless. He was saying, there's hope for a tree, but there isn't hope for me. There is hope for a tree if they were in this situation, but I do not have hope in this situation. And I agree with Job. I agree that there was no hope for him in that situation if, if, and only if, God is not involved in that situation. Hallelujah. But if God is involved, if God is involved, there is no circumstance too hopeless. There is no situation too far gone. Nobody is too far from the Lord if God is involved. Hallelujah. There is nothing that is too dead for my Lord. There is no situation that is too hopeless. There is hope here today. Hallelujah. There is hope in this place here this morning. And there was hope for Job. There was hope for Job in that situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We read later in Scripture another story. In John chapter 4, we read a story about how Jesus was traveling through Samaria. And he came to this city called Sychar where, where Jacob's well was located. And the Bible says that Jesus was tired from his journey. So he sat and he rested by a well. And it was around noon that 
a woman from Samaria came to draw water from that well. And so Jesus spoke to the woman and he asked her, he asked her for a drink. And she responded to Jesus and said this, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? You see, the Jews did not look favorably on the Samaritans. They were a group of people that were, that were part Jew, but they were also part Gentile. They were a mixed people. And they allowed everything in their cultural uh, circumstance to mix. They even allowed religion to mix. And because of this, the Jews looked down on the Samaritans. But the wonderful thing about Jesus, if you read the scriptures, the most wonderful thing about Jesus is that he never allowed cultural norms to stop him from reaching for those who were lost. He never let the mood or the situation of the day stop him from reaching those who were lost. Later, Jesus would tell a hated tax collector by the name of Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19, Jesus told him this, the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Hallelujah. It didn't matter who he was. It didn't matter who they were. Jesus was reaching out for them. Jesus was on a mission to reach the lost. Jesus was on a mission to reach out to those who were hurting, to those who were lost. It didn't matter what they had done. It didn't matter where they had been. It didn't matter who they were, where their, their, their standing was in society. But Jesus was reaching for them. Hallelujah. And now I've come to tell you here this morning, it doesn't matter who you are. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you find yourself. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you even look or view yourself as. Jesus is reaching out to you here this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus has come and to seek and to save you here today. Hallelujah. He is reaching for you this morning. The word of God is reaching out to your heart here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody is too far gone. There is no one excluded from the kingdom of God. And so Jesus responded to this woman's question. He told her, he said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him. You would have asked me. If you knew who I was, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have responded the way that you did, but you would have asked me, and, 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 and he, Jesus, would have given you living water. And she questioned how he, could, how he could have this living water, seeing as he had nothing to draw with, and the well was very deep. And, and Jesus answered her again by saying this. He said, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, hallelujah, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life, hallelujah. Aren't you grateful that Jesus uh, takes his time with you, amen, even when you ask silly questions, even when you don't really understand what is going on, Jesus took his time with that woman and he explained to her what he was talking about and when he said those words, the woman replied, sir, give me this water. She didn't necessarily understand completely what was going on, but there was a hunger in her. There was a thirst in her for something more. You see, hope had risen in her heart. She had a scent of hope. She had heard something. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Hope had risen in her heart. Hallelujah. And you see, it was later revealed that, that this was a woman that had had five husbands and she was currently living with a man that she wasn't married to. And yet Jesus spoke to this woman. You see, her life was a mess. Her life was completely broken. She was a broken woman. And I'm sure she woke up that morning thinking that it would be like every other day. And I'm sure there's somebody here this morning that woke up and said that this is going to be just like every other Sunday. But I've come to tell you this morning that this will not be like every other Sunday if you respond to the Word of God. If you allow the Word of God to, to, to take root in your heart like this woman did. Hallelujah. Nothing was going to change in her hopeless situation. That would have been the attitude that she had. The branches in her life had been cut down. The trunk had been sawed into pieces and her roots had grown old. There was nothing left to give. She had gone through five marriages. She was living with someone who was not her husband. She had nothing left to give. Her life was nothing but a stump. It was nothing but dead and broken. Hallelujah. Yet, yet, Yet there was a scent of water. 
Yet there was a scent of water. Yet there was a word spoken into her life. Hallelujah. And so what is this living water that Jesus is talking about? In John chapter 7, Jesus mentions this water again. He talks about it in verse 37 of John chapter 7. He says, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And then the apostle John, he clarifies what Jesus is talking about. He, he, tell, he tells the reader what Jesus is talking about in verse 39 of John chapter 7. He says, but this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Hallelujah. See, the living water that Jesus was talking about, that he was telling the woman about, was the gift of the Holy Spirit. That was the living water that was going to come into her life if she allowed it to come into her situation. The living water is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And in Acts chapter 2, after Jesus had risen from the dead, John said, uh, Jesus has not yet been glorified. Jesus had risen from the dead before Acts chapter 2, and he had ascended into heaven. He had been glorified. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Living water had come into that place. Living water had come into the world. Hallelujah. Living water had sprung up in Jerusalem. And they spilled out into the streets. They spilled built out worshiping and glorifying God and there was a crowd that gathered around them that day and they spoke to them and they and, and the Bible says that some mocked them some made fun of the people that were there on the streets speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God spoke through them some made fun of them but others said what does this mean and I come to tell you this morning that there will be times when people around you don't understand what's going on in your life and they may mock you they may mock you, but serve God anyway. Hallelujah. They may mock you. They may not understand what's going on, but serve God anyway. Because there will be people that say, what does this mean? What does this mean to my life? How can this change my situation? Hallelujah. The Bible says that Peter stood up with the 11 and he began to preach. He began to preach Jesus to that crowd there that day. He began to talk about how that Jesus was the Messiah, how that Jesus had come for them, how that Jesus had come to save them, how he had come to deliver them, that he was the Messiah, hallelujah, and that they had killed him. That they had heard his words, that they had spent time with him, that they had sat under his teaching, and yet they rejected him and they had killed him. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 37, that the people that were gathered there that day, they were pricked in their heart when they heard this. When they heard the, the message of Peter, they were pricked in their heart. And they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, what can we do? How can we fix this? How can we fix this? We know we did what was wrong. We know we rejected our Messiah. We know that Jesus came for us to die for us, to save us. What can we do? And Peter responds in verse 38. He says, repent. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He was saying there is still hope in your situation. No matter what you have done, those that even crucified Jesus, they were the ones that had him crucified. There was still hope in their situation, and the Holy Spirit was poured out on them that day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These were the same people that had Jesus crucified. These were the same people that re rejected the Messiah that said, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. Yet the Holy Spirit was still poured out on them. I've come to tell someone here this morning that there is nobody too far gone. It doesn't matter if you've walked away from God. There is nobody too far gone. Hallelujah. There is no sin too big. Oh God. Hallelujah. If he could fill the group of people that had him crucified, there is no sin too big for my God to handle there this, this morning. There is no situation that is too dead. Nobody is hopeless in this place this morning. There is no hopeless situation in this place here today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, because hope is in the house. Jesus is in the house here today. His presence is here meeting with us. Jesus is here, hallelujah, and hope is in the house here today. 
And I know there's somebody here that may be skeptical here this morning that may not understand what I'm talking about so passionately. So I'll prove to you that hope is in the house here today through the word of God. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 15, verse 13, he said this. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 15, verse 13, he said, Now may the God of hope, now may the God of hope. How many here today know that we serve a God of hope? Amen. That we serve a God of hope. That we serve a God that has authority over everything. That he is the Lord of heaven. And he is the Lord not only of heaven, but he is the Lord of earth. That means that he has the authority over every situation. That means... Because he has the authority over heaven. Because he has the authority in heaven. And he has the authority on earth. That means that he is a healer. He can heal your body here today. That means that he's a deliverer. He can deliver you from your situation here today. That means he is a provider. He can provide for you here this morning. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he is a mender of the brokenhearted. That he is a liberated liberator to those who are in captivity. That means no matter whatever situation you find yourself in, Jesus is hope for you here today today he is a God of hope he is a God of hope hallelujah Romans chapter 15 verse 13 continues he says this now may the God of hope now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope how how will you abound in hope you will abound in hope by the power of the holy spirit hallelujah hallelujah god is a god of hope and you will abound in hope you will find power through the power of the holy spirit hallelujah hallelujah that means that when you are filled with his spirit when you are filled to overflowing with the spirit of god that he gives you hope hallelujah that he gives you power through the holy spirit That is why a woman in our church could, could face chemo treatment after chemo treatment, hallelujah, and still have hope and still have joy in that situation because she was filled with the Spirit. Sometimes we struggle because we are not filled with the Spirit. It may have been weeks, it may have been months, it may have been years since we have been filled with the Spirit. But I'm telling you here today that if you allow the Spirit of God to wash over you here this morning, if you allow the Spirit of God to wash over your family, over your situation, hope can spring up in your life here today. Hallelujah. 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 That's why we can have peace even in the midst of the storms of life because we are full of the Holy Spirit. Our joy is not based in happiness. Our peace is not based in security. You can have joy in sorrow. You can have peace in the midst of the storm. You can have peace in insecurity if you are full of the Holy Spirit. If you are filled to overflowing with the power of the Holy Spirit, there is hope for you today. There is hope for you this morning. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if you feel that your branches have been cut down. It doesn't matter if you feel like your root has grown old. It doesn't matter if you feel like you have nothing left but a stump. Nothing left to give. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope. There is living water in this place here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God can breathe life into your situation here this morning. He can touch your family. He can touch your marriage. He can touch your children. He can heal your body. Hallelujah. He can break the chains of addiction. He can give you true freedom. He can give you true hope here this morning. God can give you a new life here today. Hallelujah. If you've come into this place lost, God can save you here this morning. You have hope. There is hope in the house here today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You do not have to leave this place the same way that you came in. You don't have to leave this place exactly as you walked in. But life can spring into your situation. Life can spring into you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As I hurry to a close, life can spring into your situation here today. And so after Jesus spoke those words to the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4, the Bible says that the Samaritan woman left the well after her conversation with Jesus. And the Bible says that she went back to her town because she was energized. She was excited by the hope that she had just experienced. You see, hope is contagious. Hope is contagious. Hallelujah. Life had sprung up in her dead situation. It was as if the stump had begun to bud for the very first time. In a long time. 
and she was energized by hope. And so she went back to that town where she would have been rejected. She went back to that town where she would have been an outcast, where people would have known her story, known who she was, known that her life was dead and that she had nothing to offer. Even in the face of that, she still went back to her hometown. She went back to the town and she told everyone that would listen about the hope that she had received. She told everyone that would listen about this man, Jesus, who had spoken hope into her life, who, had, who told her that there was living water. Hallelujah. And hope began to spread. Hope began to spread. It was started off in, in just her, and then she went back to the town, and, and hope began to spread because she allowed it to go through her. Hallelujah. So the Samaritans, they traveled out to see Jesus. They traveled out to see what this woman was talking about. And the Bible says that many of them believed on Jesus because of the witness of the woman. And many more believed because of the word of Jesus. Hallelujah. Many will believe because of your testimony, because of your witness, because of you declaring what God has done in your life. Don't ever let them make you go quiet. Don't ever let them make you go silent. Hallelujah. Don't let the mocking stop you, but speak out and encourage and offer hope to people in hopeless situations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the people believed. One woman responded to the scent of hope, and it changed an entire city. And she had yet to receive the Holy Spirit. She just responded to the word of God. She just heard the word of God and responded to it and went back to the city and decided to tell people all that she had heard from Jesus, and yet she had not been empowered by the Holy Spirit. So what is our excuse here today? What is our excuse here today? We have received power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon us. We have the Holy Spirit working in our lives. We have that living water inside of us. Hallelujah. What is our excuse here today? What is stopping us from spreading hope all throughout our communities, from spreading hope in our family, from spreading hope in our schools? Hallelujah. What would happen if we were so full of the Holy Ghost that it wasn't just a little spring, but that it came out of us, that the living water just flowed out of us and everywhere where we went, every contact we had, every person that we talked to, they felt that hope. They felt the hope. They felt the Spirit of God moving in you and through you. But that only happens if you are full of the Holy Ghost. That can only happen if the Spirit of God is moving through you. Hallelujah. If you allow the power of God to work in your life and through your life. Hallelujah. Then hope can spread. Then hope can rise all throughout this community. There is no telling what God could do in Lindbrook if we would just allow the Spirit of God to flow through us. If we would just allow the Word of God to come out. Hallelujah. 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 If you could be upstanding as I come to a close. Thank you for your attention here today. Hallelujah. There is no telling what God could do in our city, in our situation if we would allow the Spirit of God to work in us and through us. Hallelujah. We read at the, at the end of Job that there was still hope in his situation. Even though he may have felt hopeless, even though he may have felt that there was hope for a stump, but there wasn't hope for him. We read later that there was hope in Job's situation. And it reads in Job chapter 42, Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. After this, Job lived 140 years, saw his children and grandchildren for four generations. So Job died old and full of days. Hallelujah. I want to encourage someone here today. It doesn't matter what, what, what stage of life you find yourself in. You have more to give. You have more to give. You have more to give. There is hope for you here today hallelujah there is hope for you today but it is up to you to respond it is up to you to respond like the Samaritan woman it is up to you to respond to the word of God and take action and you can take action by coming to this altar here today by allowing the the ministers and, and, and the people of God in this place to pray with you allow the Spirit of God to work in your life hallelujah Augustine of Hippo said this. He said this about hope. He said, hope 
has two beautiful daughters. Their names are anger and courage. Anger at the way things are and courage to see that they do not remain the way they are. It's okay to be angry sometimes with the situation that you find yourself in. But if you stay angry, hope will never come. If you will stay angry, then courage will never rise in your heart. But I'm challenging here, somebody here this morning that may feel a little bit angry about the situation that they are in. Don't allow that anger to stop you here today. But allow courage to build up. Allow courage to rise in your heart to come to this altar to pray and allow hope to spring forth in your life. Don't shut yourself off from the presence of God. God can move in your life here today. Hallelujah. There is living water in the house here this morning. And so I'd like to invite you to come. I'd I'd invite you to come to this altar. These altars are open. Hallelujah. If you haven't spoken in tongues for a very long time, if you haven't had the Spirit of God move in your life for a very long time, I'd encourage you to come. Allow the Spirit to move through you again. Allow the Spirit of God to wash over your life here today so then that you can be that spring of living water, so then that you can be that person that isn't hopeless but offers hope to others, that you can be that person that isn't stuck in a hopeless situation but knows that they can find hope in Jesus and that they can tell others about the hope that they have found, that they can tell others about the hope that has changed their life and has changed their situation. Hallelujah. Allow the Spirit to move in this place here today.